behold the grandeur of New York, huge and expanding like the tenacity of man or big tits. <laughs> Are you good to go? Okay. Hi, I'm Risa Grady, and I'm going to solve a Rubik's Cube. It's so quiet. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> Thank you very much, Benel. Hello, everybody. My name is John Field, and welcome to The John Field Show. We uh, have lots of great guests here today, a lot of people from the artistic community, especially in Brooklyn and New York City. Our first guest is right next to me. It's uh, Gina Ginsburg. How are you Hi, doing John. today? I'm great. How are you? You're a stand-up comedian. You're an actress. You sometimes work as a tour guide in the yeah. city mm -hmm. and I understand you have a movie coming out very soon yeah this weekend uh, I'm in a movie called The Last Touch you should go see it it's a coming of age movie about a man who is coming of age uh, in his 40 something and uh, I play his wife that he leaves when he figures himself out <coughs> our next guest <laughs> Give it up for our next guest, Bronwyn Isaac. Hey. How are you doing today? Are you doing good? Hi. Cool. How are you doing? Um, no, I'm you good. Don't, you don't want to touch. That's yeah. okay. That's yeah. fine. It's, it's too it's, soon. It's too soon? Yeah. What do you mean? Just, I'm, I just, when I first meet people, like, we're in front of everyone. I'm not, I don't want to shake hands with people on television. It's I very intimate. Like, it's a breach of intimacy, I feel. We all have different levels of intimacy that we're comfortable with. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you're, you're also an actress, and you like, you know, you know, what's big right now is remakes in movies. I was yes. just wondering uh, yes. if you could be in a remake of any movie in mm -hmm. the world, which one could it be? Um, I, uh, I was watching The Matrix, and uh, I was thinking how much I would love to remake it, except where I'm Neo. Um, and instead of realizing what The Matrix is, I become one of Lil Wayne's face tattoos. Um, so I'm working on that right now. I'm scripting it. Um, I've been hitting up Spielberg the a director. lot. He hasn't responded. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. But his, I've been emailing him every day. So what's his email address? Um, it's a Gmail. You could, you'll find it. Is it sberg at Spielberg? It's, well, there's a Our few Our next numbers. guest is... <laughs> Thank you, Benel. 
Our next guest is Maddie Smith. What's up? Uh, What's going you're, on? you're actually from the same neighborhood I happen to start yes. out in. I started out, I started out in Elmira, New York. You're from oh, yeah. Buffalo, but mm -hmm. it's all the same upstate yes. neighborhoods. You know, foliage. Ravaged yours. with heroin, but uh, God, you're a Bills it. fan? Mm -hmm. How'd you feel about this game this past weekend? Well, you know, we're going to come back, I think. Yeah. Just got to put on the old uh, chicken wing hat and call it a day. You I know? just miss that. <laughs> do, you, do you like beef on wick? I yes. That's one thing I miss from that neighborhood. Absolutely. Beef on wick yes. and good Scottish hospitality. Next guest <laughs> is Teresa Sheffield. How are you doing? I didn't like that musical intro. If you could try something else. Our last guest was Maddie Smith. Hey, what's going on? No, go go back to Maddie. We're gonna go. We're gonna go like because she didn't like that intro. I just didn't like it. If you could do something else, I don't know. We can do that. Tricks. But now you're comfortable with doing something else. Yes. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. So Thanks. Maddie, be fun, Wick. It's so good. Our next guest. Oh. That, I approve. I like that. Does that make you more comfortable? It was like a nice little like Gregorian chant. But no, thank you. Go. We felt dreadful about the collapse, but it was an ordeal that we survived and it made us stronger. It was an opportunity to correct the toxic elements of our culture. With a fundamentally transformed society, one that was more equitable and sleek, there was a question of what to do with the parking garages. Much of the parking garages were divided into layers and reappropriated into civic space. Here is the audio visual directory for the parking garage that could be found on 25th Street adjacent to 6th Avenue. On the first level, you can find enough food to feed yourself and your family. We all sing and dance on the second level. Level three is assigned to Tina. It is Tina's level. She keeps the space clean and tells stories about her personal transformation. On the fourth level, you will find the world championship of laser tag, which is very competitive. Beyond that, there are four more levels. The fifth floor is where we kept society's surplus of tubas. On the sixth floor, you will discover the fully automated creation of commodities. We're not entirely sure about what's on the seventh floor. If you want to explore this abandoned space and discover your own use for this floor, we invite you to do so. The top floor is for observation. You can take your daughter up eight floors and hoist her onto your shoulders. And then you can point to the sky and quiz her about the stars as you think to yourself what type of strong woman she will one day become. Hey, John. Hi. How are you doing, B? <laughs> Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Couldn't be better. Ah, hey, Thank you. you Thank you. Hey, B, I hear that you're a big fan. Like, you started, like, the new vegetarian diet. I was wondering if you could tell me what your favorite fruits are. Uh, I like bananas. Really? Blueberries. No way. Uh, Brussels sprouts, but they're vegetables. Oh, oh. Now, now uh, 
Have you been following uh, sports games lately? Yeah, basketball. Oh, who's your favorite basketball team? Boston. Oh, me too. I like Boston a lot. What's your favorite country? Belarus. <laughs> Is that a country? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Belarus. Belarus. Belgium. That's another country. Uh, I asked you to name one country. No, uh, the... Where's Belarus in the map? The middle. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, with zero of the skills. Because yeah. up until that point, everybody was kind of like, you could kind of do whatever you wanted because everybody was kind of forced to hang out with you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so I uh, went from there to uh, public high school. It was basically completely desexualized. No one, I didn't kiss anyone in high yeah. school. Uh, and then I started doing theater and that helped a little bit, but the real thing was LARPing, live action role playing. Yeah. Uh, I would go to these campouts and it's me and like 200 to 500 other nerds who are all sexually weir weirdos who were sexually frustrated. Yeah. And we all started like, we would, all, that's where I learned how to, that's where I learned how to have sex. Who told you about your uncle? Uh, my grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. She told me that story is just kind of like a throwaway story. And I was like, what? That is a crazy story. <laughs> Uh, she was she uh, my 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 grandma uh, had a health scare and then just started giving away jewelry, <laughs> and so she like she gave me the necklace. She is like it's a gold necklace, like you know treasure and whatever. And then she was like, oh, and which one of these rings do you like? And there were four rings, and I liked that one. I picked that one, and then she was like, oh, interesting story about that ring, of this guy who just like figured out a different way to like, like, especially like, if you think about it, this was like late 1800s into yeah. like the 1950s. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> I guess you just figure out what you're good at. I'm sorry, I have to blur that out. Uh. I don't care. <laughs> Camera three, is anyone getting me? All right, and, okay. and then. They're just walking around town, mm -hmm. and there's like a banana peel mm -hmm. on the floor, and then like they walk on it, and sure. then they slip on it. Okay. Like. Oh, you've made contact, but you have not. Oh, okay. Ooh. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Stopping to deliver Postmates Shake Shack 660 item orders. Every day's a nightmare. <laughs> that happened today. Oh man. Okay. How you doing, Dennis? Dennis, how you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you, Jordan? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm chilling. It's good. I haven't seen you in such a long time. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. No, it's that's great. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, for real. Yeah, yeah. For a lot. Oh, man. It's like every time I see you, I just feel like really good, you know? Oh, thank you, brother. It's for real. It's like you're a great guy to be around. You have this positive energy. It so makes you amazing. I'm positive? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I guess uh, you're also well balanced, too. So you're, you're very realistic when you talk and you understand your limitations, but you also know how to overcome them. And I've always really appreciated that about you. That was very kind of you. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. It's for real. It's too sincere. <laughs> How are you doing, Daniel? So sincere, wow. I haven't seen you since the last time we did a special. Yeah, you know you skipped John Bill and Cini, right? Yeah, I just thought I wanted to say something. Are you asking me some questions? Daniel. Yeah. What do you think of John Bill and Cini? <laughs> Honestly, uh, he's a great guy. Uh, nice glasses, good hair. It's very thick for a man his age. It's very good. John, let me ask you a question. Why did you gather everyone here? Because I think people are special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We think you're special, John. John, this isn't really much of an interview show, more as it is an intervention. We really wanted to talk to you about the things you do. What, like what things I do? John, <laughs> let's not get into specifics. I don't want to embarrass you in front of the cameras. One thing I can say, though, is you know what you do. Your manic episodes, the disgusting way you carry yourself. My God, look at yourself, man. Every time someone smells you, you reek of death. John, I like you. What are you talking about? He likes me. John. Hey, John. Sure. Uh, what? Any just, question's fine. John, yeah, I can just, do someone else's. John. Jermaine. John, just. The mic's not on you. John, You're not being stepping. picked up John, at all, Daniel. Yeah, no, it's all right. How's John, your career going? John. Oh, it's, you know, it's okay. Um, are you talking about my legal career or my comedy career? Your comedy career. Oh, badly. 
Yeah, the legal one's fine. You're still dead in the water. Daniel, I'd rather take this pressure from you. No, but I can do better. Can you, Jermaine, can you go back to Daniel? Jermaine, over here, I'm saying mean things about him. Hi. Yeah. John. So what about me is ugly? Uh, just your soul. Not your face. You're a very handsome man. Yeah, I am. You are. You look... Very handsome. You're, you're so handsome. handsome. You're, you're beautiful. But your inside is as ugly as I am physically. Do you understand? Right. That's a very painful thing to know you. I think you're projecting. I'm not projecting, You're John. projecting. How am I projecting? Get up here and you see it. Say that to my face. John. John, how am I projecting? Oh, shit. John. John. Look at yourself, man. You're projecting because you have an alcohol problem that you're doing a good job of mitigating. I don't mitigating. have an alcohol problem. You have I had, many problems. I, you don't problems. get to walk away from I'll the alcohol problem. I'll tell you one problem. thing I don't have, ladies and gentlemen, is a family. What? That's I not a good thing. That, I don't give <laughs> up. I have a lot of family, and a lot of people who loves me. John, you know what's great about my mom is she didn't just give me up like a piece of trash. Oh, oh. <laughs> Anyone that's adopted, my God, how embarrassing for themselves. I think what is embarrassing is being very mean and being vindictive mm -hmm. to somebody on television. Because mm -hmm. television, it, it works. There are things. more people here now than will watch this later. <laughs> <laughs> How's that feel, Josh? I, I, I just. If you took a picture of a cat and put it online, it would get a thousand views. There's a thousand more there who's watching this. I just wanted to make a special moment and share it with my mm -hmm. friends. I bet you did, John. People with family would know better. I I think that you're looking at something that mm -hmm. is very warm I and bet. is about sharing, John. and you're rejecting it because you like to push people away because you don't like you. I think you should go sit in your chair, and I'm going to say goodbye to my audience now. <laughs> you, cut, you cut through me, John. Yeah, I do, because I'm smart, and I had a weird upbringing, so it made me very pick up on tiny stuff. So let's get camera one on me. <laughs> camera one? Is there, I don't see that. Hi. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been the John Field Show. I think we had a lot of fun. Our, our guest tomorrow will be Benel. Have a good day. All right, cut. I think that's it. Cut. Thank you. It's nighttime in New York City, and it's time to say good night to this beautiful city and all the people inside of it no matter who they are, from the lesbians in Park Slope with their sensible shoes and aggressive dogs, to the NYU students who are the most important people in the entire world, to all the guardian angels protecting us in the subway and having sex with each other on the DL, to Mayor Bill de Blasio and Gracie Manchin, who right now is looking at himself in a mirror and declaring himself the biggest asshole of them all. Good night, pizza and bagels. You'll be eaten tomorrow or tonight by drunk hipsters angrily scribbling poems onto their napkins about ex-lovers who gave them a guitar. Good night, everybody in New York City. Good night, all the children who are going to die young. And good night to my family, wherever they may be. Good night, New York City. Truly, you're the city of love.